This is going to be uh, my 31st uh, year here at the, uh, the Sheriff's Office. And uh, it's, uh, it, it truly has been a, a blessing for me. I'm uh, originally from Austin, Minnesota, if you know where that is, and um, the home of Spam, right? And uh, so uh, I came up uh, and applied. At that time, uh, we had, uh, I had to go up against about three, 300 to 350 candidates uh, for an opening in Washington County. And uh, fortunately for me, I, I was able to, uh, to grab that. So um, I was uh, appointed by Sheriff Hutton, uh, who you may, uh, well, actually by the county board, I guess. Um, but uh, I, I uh, proceeded or became after him, I don't know. I'm, I'm, um, Hutton was, uh, he was certainly uh, um, from Oakdale and from Oakdale Police and uh, I get, I, I started working with him in 2007, and I learned a lot uh, from his leadership, and that's where my leadership style uh, comes from as well. Uh, this is my eighth year uh, being sheriff, and uh, as Frank says, I got two uh, beautiful daughters. Uh, one is married in Stillwater, and as of two weeks ago, I became a grandparent. And for those that are grandparents, uh, I, I, the, the joy that I have, I mean, it's, it's immeasurable. It's, uh, it's very unique having this little thing uh, uh, in your hands uh, that, uh, you know, um, came from your daughter. I mean, it's just a, uh, it's very humbling and uh, really puts things uh, into perspective. So, um, with that, I'll, I'll start uh, uh, with the Sheriff's Office. So we have an incredible men and women working for the, uh, the Sheriff's Office. And uh, they do the right thing every day. And I'm very proud to say that. When you sit there and you look at uh, our agency against many of the others that are out there, um, we, we are doing things the right way. We are in the communities. Uh, we are acting uh, the way we should act. Um, however, at the end of the day, we still have a job to do, and we still enforce the laws out here in Washington County, and I think that's a, a big thing. I think that uh, um, certainly helps uh, with crime, uh, etc. and I hope pushing it back. Um, my main thing is to keep it out of Washington County, period, and um, so that's one of our things. For those that don't know, Washington County has a jurisdiction from City of Hastings. I actually have two residents in, in the City of Hastings. And it comes up and through, so Cottage Grove, Woodbury, Oakdale, up through Hugo, up to Forest Lake is our northern city. So it's a long county. And um, it's very thin, but it's very long. Um, but that is, uh, it's an incredible, working with the 33 cities and townships that we have. Uh, it's in, it's, when we talk about um, one city, that's, that's something with the elected officials, everything else, but when you have to, to work with 33 different cities and townships, uh, you get to really um, know your community. Uh, it's pretty cool. And so with that, our people, um, they get to work with the largest communities. Uh, the largest one that we have is certainly the city of Woodbury uh, to the smallest one, which is probably the city of Landfall and uh, everything in between. So uh, it's, it's definitely a, a learning experience for all of our people that are out there. Um, our staff get to work. Uh, and live and play and do all that stuff with all of the residents within Washington County. And that's, again, that's pretty cool. Um, we build relationships, that's just what we do. Um, we are unique in Washington County. And I say unique because we actually get along. Our fire, our EMS, our police, our state partners, our federal partners, our county attorney, we actually get along. And you can't say that um, in a lot of the other counties. A lot of egos get in the way, uh, which is too bad, because we're here to serve. And that is our main mission. And for us out here, 
we're very fortunate to have the people in leadership uh, that we do. Uh, Chief Noonan in Oakdale, Chief Wold, uh, Fire Chief, excellent people, excellent people. Public works, amazing. There is nothing that they wouldn't do for me, and they know that I have their back all the time. Um, certainly when we had the protest out here on, uh, a few years ago, we were there working that together. When we had the shootings up off at 10th Street, we were there together. That's what we do. We partner, we ask questions later on. When it's time to do it, we work together, and uh, it's, it's incredible. Um, so just a, a shout out to uh, Chief Newton and Chief Wold. With that mentality, um, we truly have uh, an asset uh, here in, in Oakdale. Uh, your police department, your fire department, the EMS that serves this area is, is outstanding. Uh, we get to work with Oakdale quite a bit uh, in our, not just in the city, but around our city. So whether it's uh, along 94 or along in Lake Elmo, Lake Elmo or up in Pine Springs, um, works out pretty good that way. So see that uh, Commissioner Kowalski is here. Would like to give a shout out to you and also to the county board. Not a lot of sheriffs get along with their county board. I do. And um, Stan's not, not afraid to pick up the phone and give us a call as well. Um, I will say the uh, public safety money that the state uh, gave out uh, last year uh, to public safety uh, agencies or the cities and the, the counties, 90, over 90% 90 of that that the county received came to the sheriff's office. So Stan, thank you. It certainly is helping uh, with retention, with recruiting uh, of our new officers and keeping the, the great ones that we have. So uh, thank you and thank you to the board uh, for that. Do you know who the uh, first sheriff's office was in the state of Minnesota? Might be a trick question for you. Who was the first sheriff's office? That's 80 <laughs> It is the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Um, you will see that uh, Ramsey County actually uh, has that branded uh, most everywhere uh, on their building, uh, etc. cetera. Um, however, our historian down at the Washington County Historical Society has proven that we have signed our papers probably minutes or an hour before Ramsey County. <laughs> So, which is, uh, so we duel back and forth with that. We, uh, we don't talk about uh, the first agency. Uh, we call ourselves the pioneering, ag pioneering Agency. We've been around since 1840 uh, in this uh, area. So a, a long, long time. That's, that's when we were part of the uh, St. Croix territories uh, as well. So, um, so yeah, I'm proud, uh, very proud to be the 30th sheriff. Before the pandemic, there was a few topics that I, I came out and, and talked about, and John Larson from CAST is here. We did talk about human sex trafficking. We talked about uh, mental health initiatives. We talked about children with incarcerated adults. We talked about scams against our most vulnerable. We talked about the opioid overdose epidemic that we were seeing across the nation and even here. Fast forward to today. We're still seeing all those things, unfortunately. With that being said, then you throw everything else into it. Civil unrest, employee health and well-being, community outreach, recruiting and retention, carjackings, pursuits, uh, juvenile crime, uh, and many other crime challenges that we face, not only here in Washington County, but throughout the metro and throughout the state, and quite frankly, um, throughout the country. I heard this morning uh, New York just uh, deployed their National Guard uh, to their, uh, uh, their trains, which is uh, interesting, right? I mean, it's occurring all over, unfortunately. Uh, and, and we have to be there. There's evil out there. There's no doubt about that. And um, I'm, I'm, I am very proud of our staff. I'm proud of our law enforcement partners. They're out there doing the right thing all the time. So, Frank asked if I could speak about uh, the reports, uh, 23 and, and 24. Um, I'm going to steal a line from the, the president. The state of the sheriff's office is great. Can I say that? Um, and uh, so I'm guessing that most of you do not know uh, that the Washington County Sheriff's Office 
has over 285 full-time employees. It's a lot of employees. We have a budget of about $45 million. We have a 240 bed uh, jail facilities uh, that is currently only holding about 111 inmates right now. After the pandemic, we went down to 50. We were full before the pandemic. We are now holding right around 111 inmates, uh, which is interesting to me. Our emergency communication uh, response center, that is our 911 dispatch, um, we receive over 200,000 calls for service. Now our communication center, uh, that is countywide. So when you dial 911, it comes to us. If you're along the border, it may go to Ramsey, it may go to St. Croix County, uh, or Dakota, or Chisago, or to the State Patrol. Um, but for the most part, um, when you dial 911, uh, it comes into, uh, into our dispatch center. With that, we also need radio communications, right, for all of our public safety partners, so fire EMS, et cetera. And we partner with the state along with that. So all of our portable radios, mobiles in the cars, uh, throughout the county, uh, we handle that, the county does, and uh, which uh, we have a great team to do that. We also, besides that, our records management system, there's a lot of counties that have it separate from their cities. We do not, it's incorporated all in one, so we get real-time data back and forth uh, between our city partners and our county partners, which is uh, pretty nice. Um, we also are mandated to keep uh, the courthouse safe and secure as well. Uh, so I have a whole team uh, dedicated uh, to that. We also have emergency management, uh, and so anything that uh, uh, we do for that, uh, um, our team uh, handles all the emergency management uh, issues, whether it's uh, um, ha all hazard mitigation, if there's a tornado like there was up in Hugo, et cetera, uh, plane crashes, which we just had down in Afton, they come in and they start uh, handling that for us. Our deputies in 2023 responded to over 73,000 calls for service. That is just the sheriff's office. That does not count the Oakdale PD. So 73,000 calls for service. We processed over 45,000 reports just in the sheriff's office. We processed almost 4,000 firearm permits to carry. That's quite a few. Uh, along with serving civil process that we're uh, required to, to do to over 3,200 individuals, uh, which included over 600 order for protections and restraining orders, along with completing about 67 foreclosure uh, sales, so quite a bit. Some challenges uh, that we're seeing out there, retention and recruiting. If you go on the post board website, I looked last night, we have 267 job openings. Those are agencies that are looking for law enforcement sworn officials. 267. Many of those agencies have multiple openings. So you talk about Minneapolis, you talk about Oakdale, or uh, Minneapolis or St. Paul State. I know that you have uh, openings as well, multiple openings. Um, that is that is going to uh, come back on us at some point. Right now, we're uh, what it, in the past, before the pandemic, uh, and before the civil unrest, we used to have those that could not get jobs uh, in law enforcement. They would go to our jails, they would go to our prisons, they would go to our dispatch centers, et cetera, and wait until they could find a job, until an opening occurred. What has occurred is all those people are gone now, meaning that our law enforcement uh, um, partners have scooped them all up. So we, across the state, are hurting in our prisons, in our jails, in our dispatch centers uh, as well. We hear about the nurses as well and about just retail, and I'm sure as businesses, you guys are feeling it as well. Um, but we, we are feeling it, there's no doubt. I am, uh, I am pleased to say 
um, that I have eight openings. I have 285 employees, like I said. I only have eight openings, three of which are for new deputies. Those three positions are because the county board gave me five new positions this year, and we've filled two already, and we have three in background right now, so we will be uh, full. We're, we're pretty fortunate. Um, I, not everyone can say that. I do say that I am so proud to be able to live, work, and play out here. Our community, our citizens, they step up. They support us. I know the question is, what can you do? What can you do to support law enforcement? Say thank you. When you see them at the gas station or out, at, out on the road, say thank you. It means a lot to them. We have to keep them in the, the business, um, and that is by making sure that they feel welcomed in our communities. And when we do that, we will keep them. There's no doubt about that. Um, we're, uh, like I said, it's, it's one of those things that I think we're doing the right thing out here in Washington County. Um, and I'll say that um, uh, I, I know that we are, and I'm, I'm very proud of our, all of our uh, law enforcement partners. 99.9% .9 of the law enforcement officers out there, they are doing the right thing. They're passionate about serving. They do a great job at it. Um, and like I said, it's not only in my county, but it's the state, it's the feds, it's the city as well. The negative rhetoric that is out there, it is hurting our profession. And the politicians that are doing it just to make a point or to score points with people, they gotta stop because it is having a very negative impact. Our numbers in our schools are way down. Um, and if we don't change that, uh, there'll be certainly police departments that will be closing uh, as we go. And I, I don't think anyone wants to, to see that. So uh, another fight that we're seeing is the opioid uh, epidemic uh, that continues. I did bring a, uh, a thing of Narcan uh, here, uh, commonly referred, or it's naloxone, commonly referred to as Narcan. Um, this continues to be a big thing out here uh, in Washington County. We do see uh, certainly overdoses. We had one guy that had overdosed three times and we saved his life three times by using Narcan. Um, but we continue to see that. Washington County here from 2022 through December 2023 made the biggest bust of fentanyl pills 280,000 fentanyl pills. Yesterday, three more were just uh, charged with that. I think we're up to nine. They're getting the suppliers are coming in from across the border, coming to Mexico, and then to Arizona. And then from there, they're putting them into stuffed animals and they're shipping them around the state of Minnesota, uh, including the Metro. Our partners at, uh, all the way across the Metro uh, did an incredible job and are still continuing to do a great job. Congresswoman uh, Angie Craig uh, just recognized uh, our team uh, on the House floor, the U.S. House floor in regards to this. Um, that's 280,000 pills. That's 66 pounds of fentanyl that were in those pills. That's a lot, that's a lot. Two milligrams of fentanyl can kill someone. So if you think about that, and we continue to see this coming out. Um, Pete Orpet, former county Pete uh, Orpet, I remember uh, he and I were standing together when uh, he was going to sue Big Pharma. And if you remember, that's how this all started uh, way back in the day. However, um, County Attorney Magnuson continues that fight and is doing a great job in making sure that uh, the individuals that are distributing these drugs that are out there are being locked up. Certainly the, the federal government, U.S. Attorney, are doing a great job uh, with that as well. So um, pretty, pretty cool that our, uh, our team uh, was recognized uh, out in, in D.C. with that. And uh, again, it's those, those things that uh, continue uh, that we see out here. Our uh, Washington County Drug Task Force, we. Uh, dismantled or disrupted three drug trafficking organizations last year alone. 
That's quite a, quite a bit. We only have five guys. That's it. But they dismantled three drug uh, trafficking organizations. Uh, we work with uh, North Central Haida. I was one of the uh, founding uh, board members uh, with that. And basically, it's a federal program that gives uh, local agencies, there's seven counties in, in the state uh, that receive federal money, and that's all we do. So we go out and uh, we try to dismantle and disrupt uh, the drug trafficking uh, organizations that are out there. So meth um, is still a big deal. Uh, heroin, still a big deal. Fentanyl, like I said, is still out here. Um, naloxone, like I said, Narcan. Um, I do hear quite a bit is, why do I need it? And I would say that you never know who you're going to come in contact, family, relatives, that may get a hold of one of these pills that, uh, so one of these pills that if they come in contact with it, they could have a medical reaction if they take it. Sometimes uh, our, our kids uh, don't make the, the best decisions when they're with a group of friends and may take something that uh, they may not know and it affects them later on. Uh, this stuff is over the counter now um, and for law enforcement we have to carry it. Uh, and like I said, we, we actually go through it quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's the reality in Washington County and, and across the nation, unfortunately. But uh, I would rather have um, I'd rather save a life uh, than not have something like this and, uh, and watch him suffer and, and die. So with that being said, um, Washington County Public Health and the Sheriff's Office started a thing called Take It to the Box. Uh, that's where you can uh, put your unwanted, expired, uh, unwanted or uh, unused medications. Uh, we have drop-ins throughout uh, the, uh, the county. Uh, we started that in 2013. So far to date, at the end of the last year, we have collected over 53 tons of unused, unwanted, and expired medications. There's a lot in your medicine cabinets. If you have the stuff, get rid of it. You don't need it. Um, and you never know, again, sometimes they get into the hands of the wrong people. So please do that, but 53 tons. Um, of unused, unwanted, expired medications. Homelessness. It's hard for us to uh, talk about, but that is uh, certainly, it's out here. And what I want to talk about is juvenile homelessness. Uh, that is a hard one to see because a lot of times they're going from friends to friends, they're couch, couch hopping or they're staying in the cars here and there. Um, there was a survey that said that there was over 13,000 Minnesota youth uh, experiencing homelessness. Well, that's a lot of youth that are out there. Um, and we've been working, the county board's been working really hard as well to make sure that uh, we work with our community services partners to make sure that we have somewhere for assistance for them. So um, I used to, uh, I was on the United Way of Washington County East. I'm on, a, on the board for Lake Center for Youth and Family and that is still, we continue to see that unfortunately uh, out here. Uh, mental health. Mental health in our, uh, our communities is huge. Uh, from 2019 through 2022, uh, we continued to see the increase uh, of mental health calls that we were responding to. Washington County uh, stepped up with community services. We now have a uh, embedded social worker uh, that is uh, with our detectives. And Woodbury has one, Stillwater has one, and I know that they're working to expand that program to other cities uh, as well which is truly, truly needed. There's no doubt about that. Last year alone, we went over to, or this group uh, of ours went to 700 calls. Now, 700 doesn't seem like a lot, but that's to a day. People experiencing mental health, and that's just that unit. And they're not quick calls, right? Because they need help. They need uh, resources, and it takes time for them uh, to do, but we're thankful for that. Uh, we are asking uh, Commissioner for another social worker uh, as well, because unfortunately the work is there and the need is there um, for that. Uh, with that, um, I think uh, 
We talk about substance use uh, disorder, mental health, uh, in our, all that stuff comes into the jail. Everyone who is arrested uh, in Washington County uh, comes to the Washington County Jail. We see this on a daily basis, our correctional officers do. Our jail runs like a, uh, a small little hospital. Uh, we have a dentist in there, we have a doctor in there, we have uh, about eight nurses in there. Uh, we have social workers, we have a clinician, we have volunteers uh, from most of our nonprofits uh, that come in, in to assist uh, our inmates. My goal, and I know it was Sheriff Hutton's goal as well, is that we want these uh, inmates to come out better than when they went in. They are being arrested here. They are your neighbors, they're your relatives, etc. And so we want to make sure that we're providing a good service uh, to them and so that we can uh, um, see them be uh, fruitful uh, out in our community and um, uh, successful as well. So the core program, uh, we talk about mental health, but we also have to talk about mental health uh, within our own profession. Uh, within the last 15 years, we've had uh, two suicides uh, within Washington County uh, Sheriff's Office, and that, that hurts us, there's no doubt about that. Uh, things that we can do better. We created a, a core program, it's a county occupational resources for employees, strictly for the Sheriff's Office. We have a clinician uh, that is, um, and her staff, that all of our people can go to, free of charge, and also their families. Uh, she's starting in May. Uh, she's going to be housed uh, at the sheriff's office uh, seven days a week, which is uh, pretty cool, uh, pretty, pretty great service. We know that post-traumatic stress and officer wellness is another key factor to keeping our people safe and making sure that they continue to work and stay within Washington County. Uh, and so that is uh, one of the things that we have pledged We've had the, the support from the county board, which has been amazing, um, but we want to make sure that those that are interest, interested in staying in Washington County uh, will continue to be here, and uh, that's what that is about. Um, with that, uh, I, I just want to say um, I'm proud of my team. I started off that way. We have a great team. We have a great team of men and women who go out there and they fight every day to make sure that they're serving the citizens uh, the correct way, the right way. And um, I, I am, I, I've been doing this 31 years now. And a lot of these people that uh, we have, I've hired or I've worked with uh, side by side. And so I know who they are, what they are, and what they do. And um, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of our partners as well. Uh, you should be very proud of the Oakdale Police Department as well. They do a great job out here and in, in the, uh, we work so close together. With that, I know that I got uh, some time for questions.